hello hello dear viewers a very warm welcome to our channel it's very good to have you here in this video we're going to have a look at a reassembly of a four stroke gasoline engine well you see me here reassembling the bearings i have re we have replaced all the new bearings then followed by inserting the already repaired crankshaft the crankshaft is inserted in the groove the bearing has to be sitting properly and uh, make sure it is rotating freely by simply rocking the piston the connecting rod then proceed by inserting the counter gears insert the shaft don't forget the washer there is a washer sitting between the housing and the counter gear once you make sure that it is rotating free then proceed to inserting the main gear the speed gear assembly and when you insert it rock it a little make sure that it is fitting to the counter gear shaft and to all the, the counter speed gears once everything is set in place then this side of assembly is finished go ahead and uh, follow reassembly of the other parts as well this will be the other side of the cover we'll be inserting the bearing if you are replacing new bearing make sure that you are covering you are removing the, the grease cover because the bearings in this transmission housing are to be lubricated by oil if the cover is there it will keep it away from the oil so it will be removed now this is a kick start mechanism make sure that it is sitting properly and uh, insert the spring there is a rubber that will be hel helping the kick start mechanism from colliding with the housing also go ahead and insert that then you see us right here reassembling the other half of the crankshaft housing in order to do that you can apply a gasket maker in between and insert a paper gasket so the gasket paper have some extension on the connecting road side make sure you trim those ends those both ends have to be trimmed so that the connecting road can oscillate freely without touching any gasket material once the gasket material is applied once the gasket is placed and the gasket maker is applied to both sides then gently insert the kickstart mechanism and lower the other half of the crankshaft housing onto the other assembly fit it in place make sure that the bearings of the crankshaft is sitting nicely and the gear selector and the, the kickstart mechanism plus the clutch shaft they should be in place once that is inserted go ahead and insert the 8 mm bolts now let's go ahead to reassembling the oil pump make sure that you are using new o-rings that way you can ensure that the o-rings that are going to be installed for the oil pump assembly will work nicely then there is a locating dowel on one side of the oil pump and the remaining two holes they should be having new o-rings inserting an a socket driver will be very difficult so use a screwdriver in order to install the holes on the crankshaft there are two keyways on this side on the chain side previously we have removed two keyways let's go ahead and install those two keyways one is for the oil pump drive gear and the other is for the clutch housing assembly gear right here you see us assembling the tensioner on the belt tensioner on one side it has a lock on the lower side then proceed by installing the clutch the clutch has a washer and then a spacer has to be installed go ahead and install the clutch and the pressure plate the, this is a multiple pressure plate multiple disc type of clutch it is a weight type of clutch that is getting operated by spring pressure and uh, it is always lubricated with oil so this is a wet type clutch go ahead and arrange all those and then install the housing of the clutch onto the shaft and then install the springs and the spring seat assembly now all the pressure plate and the clutch assembly has been installed then this is the outer housing of the clutch that receives power from the crankshaft it will transfer to the pressure plate and then the pressure plates will transfer that power to the friction disc and the friction disc will transfer that power to the shaft on which 
the screw is being bolted right now. The spring force that is generated by multiple springs that are placed on the clutch will clamp it together. So when there is a spring load, the spring will clamp the pressure plate and the friction disc together so that friction will transfer power from the pressure plate to the friction disc. Once the spring force is relieved by pressing the entire spring assembly down by the clutch release mechanism, will disconnect power flow. So that is how this type of clutch operate. When the spring force is clamping the entire assembly together, power will be transferred. And when some external force, by pushing down the spring seat, the spring seat on the upper side right here, by forcing that, you can disconnect power flow by simply loosening the force that is clamping the spring. Right now, I'm trying to insert the gear selector shaft. This is the gear selector shifting mechanism. This will actuate the gear selecting star shaft. Right here, we are inserting the gear selector star is going to be operated. Make sure that you are placed washer on the upper side. The gear selector has a washer and then go ahead and insert the dowel that will connect the gear selector pulley assembly to the shaft and make sure that the gear is selected easily by simply rotating the clutch or the crankshaft you can make sure that the gear assembly is working nicely. This right here is the flywheel end of the assembly. Let's go ahead and uh, install the direction selecting gear. This is the one that is we are going to use for reverse operation and forward direction selecting. And then on this side we will be installing this selector gear and there is a power transmitting unit and followed by installation of the differential. So whenever the power flow direction has to be replaced, when, whenever the power flow direction has to be changed on this type of transmission, you have to operate that gear and that gear will receive power either from the lower side or from the upper side and then that will change the direction of power flow. This is a side side bearing for the differential. Make sure that it is placed in, in the housing very nicely. Tap it a little. Once it is inserted, then go ahead and install the differential. Make sure that the differential is in a nice condition. The side gears, the pinion gears, the differential shaft, the differential carrier, everything has to be very nice. And then once the differential is set in place, then you can cover the other side of the differential cover by installing the bearings that are required and also make sure that you are using new o-ring, new oil for the differential side gear housing so that oil leakage will be prevented and also make sure that you are using new bearings for mounting. So we'll be replacing all the bearings with new ones including the oil, the o-rings and the dynamic seals they are all replaced. Now let's go ahead and install this bearing and then make gasket material to apply gasket material to all sides and then place the gasket and then we're going to reassemble the entire differential housing covers. Now all the bearings are replaced, so ball bearings are replaced. Then let's go ahead and apply a gasket, gasket to the surface, gasket maker to the housing. Once gasket maker is placed on both housings and then we will be installing gasket. This is an extra care in order to prevent oil leakage, especially if the three wheeler is going to be driven in an extremely hot environment that will result in extremely high temperature operation that might result in oil leakage. So in order to prevent, we have applied gasket material, gasket paper and gasket maker is applied on either side. Then let's go ahead and install the differential side cover and then the screws are going to be screwed. 8 mm screws are screwed on all the housings. Now you can see the differential side gear is a little bit wobbling but that will be kept in place by the axle shaft. The axle shaft, the axle output shaft from the differential is going to be installed on that spline that will keep it in place. So just don't mind if the differential side gear shaft is a little bit jerky and a little bit wobbly. On the clutch housing side, 
you have to install the spring loaded uh, valve operating mechanism on the crankshaft and this is a clutch release ball and ball seat this is assembly that will press the spring down in order to disengage the clutch once that is in place apply gasket material to the cover and then install new gasket and once everything is in place then cover the clutch side aluminium cover go ahead and screw the bolts 8 mm bolts everywhere once that is installed remove the oil filter cover install new o-ring and then also replace the oil filter with new one as well right here you see us replacing the o-ring once the o-ring is placed in place clean the surface and uh, remove any type of previous gasket residue and then go ahead and install the oil filter right here now the oil filter is inserted in place and then cover it with the top the top has to be covered well the entire assembly is almost getting done now we are left with the clutch release mechanism and some of the assemblies of the oil filter and oil passage go ahead and install new o-ring for the oil filter once the o-ring is installed then place the oil filter element on the o-ring press it down actually there is a spring that is forcing the oil filter to that o-ring install a new gasket don't forget the spring and then install the oil filter cover every time you change oil it is recommended that you replace the oil filter element as well so this can be done every time oil is replaced then there is an oil passage that will be transferring pressurized oil from the filter side to the gallery side and uh, the bolts they have copper washers don't forget to install both copper washers on the upper and the lower side one is a 12 millimeter bolt and the other one is a little bit larger 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter bolts are there install those and uh, right here we are greasing the clutch release screw mechanism make sure there is sufficient grease and dust cover has to be kept in place so this is how you assemble now we are in inspect assembling the power takeoff from the differential right here you see the differential power output this is the one that is going to transfer power from the differential to the axle it has a screw a 13 millimeter screw keeping it in place and there is a spring seat and a spring lock mechanism make sure that you are installing that well we are almost done the timing chain and the assembly has been assembled the cylinder head has been assembled this is the side cover for the clutch and camshaft for the camshaft side once this is done let's go ahead and test once it is installed on the vehicle let's go ahead and test it this is the initial starting after the engine has been assembled <laughs> Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you in this video. If you like what has been presented, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.